Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and uh, if I was Adobe, I would be shaking in my boots right now. Why is that? Well, because the end of last week, Canva released Affinity Suite. This is Affinity Photo, Designer, and Publisher all merged together into a single project and free. Now, what do I mean by free? I mean everything that you could do in Photo, Designer, and Publisher before, all of that functionality is here, and it's completely free. They've added some new functionality on top from your Canva subscription on the form of Canva AI. I will cover that at the very end of this video. For those of you that hate AI, you can think of this as a free version of Designer, Photo, and Publisher, and leave it at that. If you want, you can even come here, click this little button right here, and say, bye bye AI features, and just pretend that they don't exist. All of the functionality you got in those three programs before, it is all here and together in one place. So that's pretty awesome. So again, here, Vector, this used to be called Affinity Designer. Pixel, this used to be called Affinity Photo. And Layout, this used to be called Affinity Publisher. Sorry, Affinity Designer. It's not a program I ever use. So personally, I don't care about it. What I can do is I can come up here, click it, and just get rid of it. So I'm going to focus mostly on these two today. On that same topic, though, of what I just did there, this is one of the cool things they've added in this version. You can now click here, and you can customize the hell out of it everything. So if you're only interested in certain subjects, you can bring just the tools you need in, create your own tools, toolbars, panels, etc. At the same time, you will also notice up here, there are various different studios. So say I came in here, I was just doing some color grading work. I could come in here and then boom, I'm in color grading mode for our tool. You see over here, you got the various different appropriate tools, etc. that you need. Same thing if I was doing uh, text work, I could come in here, typography, all of my typesetting stuff is here as well. Very cool. But I'm going to switch and focus mostly on vector and pixels today until I get to the AI stuff at the end of this video. So I guess the first thing you're going to want to understand is what are the difference between these two programs? This is basically the equivalent of Adobe Illustrator, and this is basically the equivalent of Adobe Photoshop. At the heart, this works in pixels, this works in vectors. And that means, here, let me show you. It all mixes together. Let me come here, create a new scene like so. I am currently in pixel mode. I'm going to go over here to this brush, and boom. Those are all drawn with pixel. You see it created a new pixel layer. I'm now going to switch over here to the vector mode. I'm going to pick a uh, pencil tool right here. I'm going to give myself some strokes so my, my brush will actually show up. And then here, that is vector. So what the hell is the difference between these two and why do you have separate programs for this? Well, like I said, pixels or raster are drawn of individual dots. You see here, so the, the edges and the shading of it is done by basically changing the color of your photo slightly as you get to the edge. But if I come on down here and we look at this one, this is drawn with math, which gives me some really cool abilities. For example, I could come here, I can grab this particular control point and I can move it around. Or I can grab this handle and I can change my curve. So you can change these things after the fact, but even cooler, I'm gonna switch over here to uh, the vector rendering mode. What you're gonna notice here is I can scale in pretty much infinitely and it stays super sharp because this isn't using pixels. This is actually using mathematical equations for doing the drawing. That is fundamentally the difference between the two. Now, the cool thing about raster graphics is you can do a lot more with them. Vectors, you can scale them up and have them in infinite resolutions. Uh, you can make easier edits and changes to them. So you can, again, you can do stuff like this, or you can have one that uh, I could come in here and basically pick a primitive shape like this. Uh, and we'll give it a fill. So let's actually fill that in. Oh, that's my fill. There. Boom. All right. So there, my solid filled shape like so. And I could grab another shape like this one, like that. And then you can actually select these things. So like this and this. And I could subtract one from the other. And basically, you can, again, use these mathematical shapes to create compound objects. Whereas when you're dealing with raster, so here is a more advanced raster demo. So this guy is made out of individual pixels, all of individual different colors. Well, you could do some really cool things with this in that your pixel manipulation. So you got your straightforward adjustments. You can do this on both sides. So I could come here and I could say, um, I want to change out the contrast. So I could come in here, uh, change the brightness and contrast, increase the brightness, decrease the brightness or whatever. Standard stuff that you could do. But at the same time, you can also do things like live adjustments. So here, live adjustments, and I'll showcase two of the new ones. We have a new lighting tool here. So I can actually put dynamic lighting in my scene and relight how it would work, uh, including the amount of shine that the light is generating in the scene 
or the diffuse effect or the specular effect, uh, how much it's going to influence things in the scene. I can change, again, the distance of the light. Of course, I can move it around in our particular scene. Uh, but I can also actually have it do a little bit of a texturing effect or an embossing effect where that light hits a surface. So there's all kinds of really neat things you can do with this stuff. And these stack. So if I do another one on top, it, it, it's non-destructive. So I can keep, I can add them, I can remove them in, I can change them anywhere in my... Um, my order and they all work on top of each other. We've also got a couple of neat new effects here. For example, I have a new, um, uh, what glitch here? Glitch has a ton of capabilities. So we can do an aberration glitch like so, or I can do a different aberration, or I can do a shredding or blasting or sawtooth effect and so on. That's a neat new live filter they added in. Again, you can stack these all together. Another thing you've got is when you're dealing with anything, it's, this is especially obvious back over here. I could pick my object over here. So I'm in vector mode there. Uh, we can do a lot of little things. Like I could do um, a color overlay, change the color of my object completely like so, or I can make it glow on the inside or I could give it an outer shadow, drop it out a bit. We can control that over here. Um, so make it very intense. We'll offset it quite a bit. So you do shadowing effects there. And again, where vectors really shine is things like doing text. If you've ever done text in something like Inkscape, this is going to be so much easier. So easy. There's my text in the world. Boom. I can position it here. I can, I can rotate it and handle it that way. I can dynamically change the font of it right here. Um, oops. And so I can even actually do it on an individual element within. So I could grab just the A here, for example. And if I want to make it change in size, I could have it be a little A. You got all kinds of control over these. And this is, again, this is just straight out vector graphics right now. And the cool thing here is at any particular time, and this is something you've always been able to do, I could take my vector image over here. I could grab it in this layer over here and I could say, okay, I don't want to be a curve anymore. What I instead want to do is rasterize this. So boom, rasterize it and then bang. And then now that is a pixel layer just like this one. So I could actually go ahead and merge this down into the other one. And boom, there I have one pixel layer all working together. So at any particular time, you can actually turn a vector graphic into a raster graphic. Well, one of the really cool things that they've added with this version is now I can do the opposite. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place a vector graphic into the scene. So here we go. This is a vector graphic. So you see an idea. It's built up of compound shapes like so. So I can... Um, you know, I could change the fill of this guy. And it's basically, you make your image out of a composition of shapes, right? So that is how uh, that works there. So let's go back over to where we were. So that is the vector form of it. Well, now I'm going to do is I'm going to place a pixel version of this. You never used to be able to do this before. So you see this is a PNG version of the Godot logo. And I'm going to paste that into the world. So now this is a pixel version. So you see, zoom in. Eventually, you'll see it's made up of a series of dots. Whereas again, if I come over and look at the other one, it is vector. Uh, it is you're just seeing the grid. This is infinitely uh, scaling because that is a vector. This math. Well, what I can now do is I can take a raster image or a bitmap image, a pixel image like what we've got right here, and you're gonna get this quite often. You're gonna get a logo, but it might be a little bit low resolution or whatever. Now, what you can do is actually come in here, go to the vector menu over here, and image trace, and I say okay, and apply. And now this. This is now a vector. That is freaking awesome. That functionality didn't used to be there. That is one of those things they have definitely added with this release. So that's a very top level view of what this is all about. Basically, it does the same things. Again, if you're working on image manipulation and so on, you're going to probably instead want to be over in like retouch mode um, and doing things like I come in here and say, all right, I'm working on... Uh, retouching, and then I come over here, okay, I'm going to do some recoloring, or I can change my color curves, number of different options available there, uh, and so on. So you've got these various different modes there. That's where you do your traditional Photoshop photo-esque editing. Your drawing modes, you basically straight up various different drawing tools available here. One cool thing that they've added as well is you can actually hover over thing and get a description of anything that's going on. They've also added this, especially useful if you are just learning, is you can ask any questions such as, how do I turn a vector into a raster image? 
Uh, and then it's got its own little AI chatbot that is now integrated in here. This does not require anything special. I, again, this is early on too, so you're gonna notice the font size is extremely small, but it'll walk you through what you need to know. There's also a full documentation help system built in here as well, uh, which is very handy, especially if you're just starting out. And if you're in terms of what you need to get your images out or in as, uh, you could open and bring in all kinds of documentations, including uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, PSD, and so on files. Uh, and then at the same time, you can export out in a wide variety of formats as well. So here we see export, and you see JPEG, various different pings, TIFF, SVG, PDF, uh, and DWG, you name it. Uh, and the other thing you can do is actually you can export out to Canva now, which I guess makes a certain amount of sense. So now we're gonna switch over to the AI side of things. You need to have uh, a subscription to pull off what we're about to demonstrate. And this is also gonna probably be the most problematic part of the demonstration because AI never, <laughs> never behaves the way you want it to. Now there are a couple of tools in here that are just straight out useful. These are some things that I were, really wish were built in all along. Uh, one thing that we've got now, for example, pixel layer here, and you're gonna notice here beside something like pixel selection, it's got this little crown here. So when I've got a pixel layer selected, uh, I can open up. I actually, I want to start from scratch on this one. So let me just close everything down and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's get rid of everything here and we will reopen that image. So let's boom, bring that guy in. All right, here. So pixel layer selected over here. I come in here, pixel, pixel selection. And then here, for example, I could do this, select a particular subject and then go boom. So there it is, it's selected our um, two foreground mechs and then let everything else go. So then what I could do, for example, here is once again, go pixel, pixel selection, uh, and then invert. So then we have our background selected, hit delete. So now we just have our two mechs. Oops, here, let me just get rid of my selection, like so. So there is uh, one of the things you can do that selection is AI driven. Obviously you've got your traditional generative AI. So I can have this go ahead and create me a pixel layer by giving a description right here. So I'm gonna go here and say um, a dark sci-fi moonscape environment with planets and stars in the background. You, you know, you've seen Gen I at this point in time. You can have it automatically enhance your prompts so it makes you have good prompts as opposed to what I do, which is have terrible prompts. And then it's gonna go ahead and do Gen AI. This is the part of AI that, um, is it ripping off an artist to make this work? Probably. Uh, I don't know where they source their Canva gets their actual data sets from. And this is the part of AI that is definitely the most controversial. And there you see a background image. Now, I don't know why it didn't fit to our, our particular scape, but you know, we'll just boom it up like this. Uh, I could have done multiple gens, by the way, different options here, but this is created as a layer. And then boom, there is our effect. Now, let's say I, I don't really... Say so yeah, it's not doing it for me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up here and say, all right, um, I want to go ahead and say uh, generative edit. All right, here. And what I'm going to do is say make it winter like this. And again, click edit. And now with that layer selected, it's going to winterize that layer. So by the way, we only have the one thing affected. So the edit should only apply to that particular layer. This is how edits work. So let's see how well it does at winterizing our background. There you go. So now we've got a background scene. So I'm gonna grab our foreground here and I'm gonna say, um, once again, edit. So we're gonna add a, add a little bit of snow to these guys. So let's say, uh, add some snow to each mech and edit. Oh, I should have said preserve to layer. I didn't. Let's see what it does. It might not work for me here. But again, you know how the AI stuff works. This is pretty typical of it. There's a couple of things in the AI area that I find really cool, though. I'm going to show you case, showcase one of them in just one second, though. Another one of these features here. So boom, there we've got very, very, very snowy, uh, perhaps more snowy than I meant it to be. Uh, by the way, it is completely undoable, so you can get rid of things. And then we've also got the ability to actually just create things on the fly. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to pick this area right here, and then I'm going to say AI fill, generative fill tool, and say add a sci-fi jet fighter. And we can say how many of them to create. So let's go ahead and create uh, four and apply. And then this is going to go off and do the AI fill, but it's going to do it specifically to this location and it's going to incorporate it in uh, and give it one more second. We'll see what it does. And boom, 
All right, one more second is a few more seconds. So this is most of the AI stuff. Uh, boom, so there we see our jet fighter there. We've got multiple different options. And pick the one you like, if you like any at all. By the way, this is its own layer, so I can actually grab it and we can move it around a bit. But you notice there, because it wasn't confined to just this layer, we got part of the mountains in the background too. So you're gonna wanna, when you do the gen, to keep it into that certain specific spot. Now, the cool thing here, one of the tools that they've added from the AI that I could actually see myself using quite often um, is this. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a version of this image that is much lower resolution. So here you can see, this is a pixelated mess. And what I could actually do is I can run it through this one here, which is called Super Resolution Tool. And there you see the results. So it's, it's very, uh, the grid is making it hard to see. So let me just go ahead and I'll turn the grid off. So turn off the pixel grid and there you see the results. So it's, it's taking something and making a much more detailed version. You also have the controls over like how much. So if it's doing it a little too much or you're losing your style, you lose it there. So you can you can jack that down a little bit. But you can see you can take something that is really kind of so low resolution as to be pretty much unusable and have it turn into to that. So again, there to there. Now another neat thing that we've got, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. Uh, you've also got the ability to take a surface, so I can say here and do an expansion and basically say, okay, Here's what we got so far. Now fill it in. Now the funny thing about this expansion is it can uh, it can generate <laughs> weird things. I've had it just generate a guy just sitting over to the side smiling at me. Like, um, but for the most part, and I've actually had it generate logos, so watermarks, which is where this stuff is very much not cool. Um, so that's the downside to Gen AI. But let's see what it does. So there you see, expanded things out. It just it just made the scene bigger. Like that's. That, that that one, it did like a very good job. It took what was there, extrapolated it out, and made it, it better. And again, if you want to make it higher resolution at any particular time, you can click this one and generate out a higher res version of it as well. Uh, there's also tools here for like colorizing an image. You got to bear with me. A lot of these tools are brand new to me. So if you've got a black and white image like this, you can now actually colorize it. You can change the temperature and the result of the colorization there. So that is kind of the gist of the AI tools. Um, you got some, again, expansion, filling, editing, uh, portrait blurring, portrait lighting, uh, and yeah, and then a selection tool there as well. So that's kind of it. That's uh, the, the tools and functionality of Affinity Studio. Again, if you hate the Gen AI stuff, you could completely and utterly ignore it. Like I said earlier on, you can actually just straight out turn it off and just pretend it doesn't exist and just work entirely in uh, the old school format here with uh, basically Affinity Designer and Affinity Studio. I do love that they're here together. I love that you have easy access to these tools that used to be uh, completely separate. I'd have to go from one program to the other. They're now quite easy to access, which is a good thing. I appreciate that aspect. Uh, whereas before you used to have to load one program, bring it across and so on. But the flip side is you'll often find yourself trying to do something. It's like, okay, how do I, so I want to go here. I want to select this edit tool for my vector, but you're over here in pixel mode. And then so what you can only do is treat with it as if it was a pixel object. So like, where's my selection tool? I don't, then you got to go, oh yeah, I'm in the wrong mode and switch across, but you get used to it really fast. You, you really do. Um, it, it is a, an improvement over what we had before in terms of workflow. Uh, I like that it's a single file format right now. I think that the, the free tier is worth it. And I think that the AI stuff, it's very selective. If you don't want to use it, you don't need it. The only things that I really want here that weren't there before, I want remove background to be built in. Uh, that's just one of those things I think should have always been there. And I want this pixel selection to be built in. Other than that, um, yeah, uh, you could probably ignore everything that was there and get by as if it didn't exist. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Let me know what you think of Affinity Studio. Do you think Adobe has reasons to be worried? Let me know in the comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.